Hi there, this is Robin Norgren, and today we're going to draw and create in the style of uh, Romero Brito. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. It's got, it's a, got a really fun pop artist uh, style to it, which I think the kids will love because it's very colorful. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start the drawing process first, and then we'll start to create. So very first thing is we're going to um, simulate kind of a mountain or a meadow top here. So I would just direct the children to make kind of a squiggly line at the bottom of the page. Then I would have them just put a dividing line, maybe about um, four fingers, eight fingers over. Next, I would have them make an octagon, uh, maybe just about halfway up the page. So I'd start with the top half, top of a triangle. You can also take the, use this as an opportunity to have them work with rulers and give them dimensions that you would like them to use to formulate this. Two lines on the side, so now it's like the, the inside of a rectangle. Oops. Oops, actually that's not where I want you to go. Let's go. Then two lines a little bit towards the center. And a line underneath. And then something that looks like a perch or I'm sorry, uh, the post. Then we'll make the opening for the bird. And then a roof. And again, all of this can be done with a ruler if you'd like. Next, we're going to come to the top here and we're going to make um, what's going to be the sun, except it's going to be just a half uh, semicircle and then sun rays. That span the whole page. Now let's add a bird figure. So I'm I would say probably the easy way to easiest way to do the bird figure is to make first the wing. So we're gonna go up and around and then one right next to it and then one a little bit further down. Then we're going to make the body go up and over. We're going to make a wing sticking up, you can see. We're going to put a beak, a dot for the eye. It's a very stylized bird. Finally, we're going to add just a little bit of, I'd say what we're going to call a bush, just right over here in the corner. And then we're going to take our pencil and we're going to erase any corresponding lines. So like here in the post, right here in the um, sun area, and then right here where the um, bush is. Uh, you can decide also to take that out as well, this line right here. So what's going to be fun about creating this project is, of course, the brighter the better because of the um, style of the artist that we're, that we're learning about with um, Romero's style. And you can see a lot of his work uh, at Disney, and he's just done some really 
fun and eye-catching work and so therefore because we want to emulate his style this needs to be just as eye-catching so I've gotten actually some really fun um, scrapbook paper and it's not your typical scrapbook paper in that it has like a really nice sheen to it which will really make it pop on the paper and then lots of markers and so then I would just have the students go to town where they're going to be just taking little strips and filling it in in the paper and um, so putting part some of it in the Sun and some of it in the, the the meadow area some of it onto the um, birdhouse as well as mixing marker in as well you could always add in watercolor paint and I always just say just depending on when your last project was and what kind of materials you used because they can tend kids can tend to get a little bit bored of using the same kind of materials all the time so I really like to mix it up so I thought I'd just show you little snippets of what I'm doing as we go along. Um, so I, basically I would maybe even encourage the students to start with one part of um, the project first. So maybe just work on the bird, K, uh, the bird house or just work on the bird or just work on the meadows. Um, but also because I'm a Montessori teacher, I'm always interested in what, how they choose to work on the project as well. So whatever works for your uh, group of um, kiddos, just make sure and uh, execute that throughout this project. All right, so I'm starting to work with the markers now, and as you can see, I've also started to put in some little designs as well. So stripes and circles, and I did figure eights here. And if you've seen my uh, post on, or my video on doing bird houses, I uh, worked with the students on just thinking about doodling uh, pretty much like by looking at scrapbook paper and how it you know the polka dots up here for example let that inspire some polka dots you put somewhere else um, here where it's got kind of some fragmented lines I'm gonna find another place for me to put the fragmented lines over here there's some wording so maybe take a marker and put some wording over here so really about bouncing around and making this painting as cohesive as it can be so here's another fun idea. If you have these handy, um, you can use oil pastels. Now, obviously, you need to be a little bit careful, um, but these are um, an oil pastel from, um, they're called Gallery, and they're actually neon uh, oil pastels, which would go fantastically with this project. So if you have these around as well, and actually you can get them from Dick Blick, I want to say there's maybe a box of like 12 for maybe four dollars so actually very reasonable and they last a really long time make that investment for your classroom all right so we're rounding it out here and just depending on time uh, because some of your students may really be getting into it and some of them might be getting a little fidgety and want to finish up this might be the time I pull out the watercolor paints and start letting them finish it up with watercolor paints uh, but one uh, big key I would say once you finish all of your painting and creating is to go back with either a pen or a marker and trace out all those black lines marker actually would probably uh, be a little bit more uh, preferable because it really will make this stand out and, and almost have a poster quality to it all right so we're going uh, towards the home stretch of this project and it might need to be a two uh, uh, session pro project just depending on how much time you have uh, for the day or it might be a great project to do on one of those test days but now I'm going to come through and I'm going to ink everything um, as you see I did put in a little bit of watercolor paint but you can see the scrapbook paper you can see the um, the patterns I've added, the markers, um, the watercolor um, paint, and the oil pastel. So this is the oil pastel I was talking about. All right, so I'll give you one final peek uh, with all of the um, outlining done, and then uh, I will let you be on your way. All right, so here's the final outcome, and I hope that you're students enjoyed creating this project. It was a ton of fun and you know how we at Josie's Art School love so much color so to find an artist that we could uh, play around with color as much as we did with Romero Brito, what a joy. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do a few more from his um, his repertoire because I think they're just such fun and easy um, projects to do in the sense that it gets gives uh, children confidence with color and confidence with drawing skills and it's just an all-around fun happy project. All right friends make sure and uh, look at our archives uh, and subscribe to Josie's Art School as well as uh, 
connect with me if you'd like me to create a personal art curriculum for your program. And if you are in the Virginia area, be sure and call me if you'd like to hire us to run your art program. All right, see you soon.